Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by the Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. Now, fall is in full swing, and if there's one thing we know in Oregon, there is no escaping the rain. (laughs) And while we're all about putting on that rain jacket and getting outside, sometimes we're just staying indoors. That's right, Vicki. I love being outside. I love you know, be putting on my hat, my jacket and hiking in the forest in the rain in the winter. But I also love being inside. So on this week, we'll be talking about some of our favorite indoor activities, stuff that keeps our bodies moving, activities that help prep us for our next outdoor adventure, um, or what we like to do on our much needed days of rest and recovery. Absolutely. We're going to kind of talk about Portland specific stuff in this episode, but I'm sure a lot of what we talk about is applicable to wherever you are. Yeah. So Vicki, why don't we start at, at an activity that you and I both share, yes. um, and that's yoga. So Vicki, you're a yoga instructor. Uh, my partner, Sadie, is a yoga instructor also. So I feel like I'm I'm trying to do yoga, you know, as much as I can. And I know you're obviously doing it quite a lot. So what, you know, how do you think about yoga when we're, you know, in this time of year, when we're sort of in the off season? And how is that different than how we think of yoga? Like, you, as we're doing in the summer amidst all of these activities. It's funny now that we're getting into fall because as a yoga teacher, you notice an uptick in attendance <laughs> in the, your classes because the weather is kind of cruddy outside. So people want to stay indoors, but keep moving. So right now it's getting into the height of yoga season, whereas summer is the low season. I would say right now people kind of like focus more on just doing yoga more often during the week, moving during the day or having some type of yoga goal. Whereas in summertime, I think it's almost like a cross training activity. It helps with injury prevention, helps you with any outdoor activity, whether that's hiking, mountain climbing, running, you know, what have you. Uh, Yoga is a great way to cross train for all those things as well as just keeping you mentally in check and helping with breath work as well, which is a great thing for your outdoor activities. Um, But it's moving meditation. And that's one of the reasons why I really, really love it. Yeah, I feel like so often when I'm doing yoga in the summertime, it's like, this is such a great way to um, help my body stay loose or help sort of do some, some nice movement after hiking. It's sort of like, how is this a part of the activity I'm doing? And this time of year, it's more like, this is the activity that I'm doing. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. What I also love about yoga is that if you're in Portland, there are so many studios. There has to be one that's close to you somewhere. Also, different studios offer like different pricing packages. So there's some great studios that are very accessible. So going off of that, Look at the studio websites, and if you want more of an active class, a vinyasa class might be something you look for. Then there's also restorative classes that are nice, less sweaty, and holding postures and stretching you out for longer periods of time. All great things, and it's whatever kind of suits you. So endless options for yoga here in Portland. What else are you really enjoying inside, Jamie? Well, I'm, you know, we, we talked about this before we hit record. Um, you know, Vicki, I know you're, you've, you've got a lot more sort of like really active stuff in the fall and winter. I'm more of a hibernation guy. <laughs> um, I, I like to sort of embrace the quiet darkness of the fall. Yes. So I'm looking more at when, it, when the weather turns cold and rainy, I'm looking for the soaking pools. Mm. That's like, I love to go to here in Portland. We've got a couple of places um, that I love to go to. Common Ground is sort of my main spot. Um, they've got an outdoor soaking pool. Um, they also have like, you know, a sauna and massage therapy, all that sort of thing. But, you know, on like sort of a chilly, drippy day, going out and sitting in the soaking pool for an hour is like perfect for me. Um, and it's like an all season thing. It's great after doing a lot of physical activity as well. But like, just having that chance to like relax and feel the hot water in the body. 
um, for me, that's, God, it's hard to top. Yeah. I feel like it's right about this time where like literally my bones start to creak. (laughs) (laughs) There's nothing just like sliding into a hot soaking pool to really relieve that. Um, That is, yeah. On a rainy day, that sounds like absolute perfection to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're like, you know, at the end of the day and then you just go home and go right to sleep. Or sometimes I love to do that and then go across the street. There's a Thai place nearby. Um, and I love going, like getting like a nice hot bowl of like Tom Ka. Oh, yeah. And it's it's like you get the outside body soak and then you get like the inside body soak. Uh-huh. And that combination is like <laughs> just perfect. Wow. I need to do that exact day. (laughs) Uh, Another place you can find soaking pools, if you're looking for a a much, a a bougier option, I would say, Knot Springs is also a place that offers that indoor soaking experience. You get a view of the city and like the river from up where their soaking tubs are. Um, It's pretty pricey, but, uh, you know, they also offer like massages there. They have a like indoor gym and yoga studio. So, um, just, uh, another option in the many soaking pools of Portland. Yeah. And of course there's a lot of like hot springs if you want to do a travel to one, but the, the sort of the forested hot springs people like to go to when we get into the snowier season, it can get a little dicey to get up to them. So I don't typically recommend everyone make their way up to those you know if you know what you're doing you've been there before you prepared that's great and fine but you know for our indoor episode you know let's you know, i think we kind of want to focus on these these close to home ones but there's going to be if you don't have a hot spring near where you live um you know or like a soaking pool place uh do you have a friend with a hot tub <laughs> find that friend <laughs> you know bring over a bottle of wine or whatever and uh and and Take advantage of that. Uh, it's a great way to hang out with people and reconnect oh, in this time of year. Yeah, exactly. All right. Let's switch gears a little bit. There are a ton of great rock climbing options, indoor rock climbing options in Portland. But whether you're top rope climbing or lead climbing or bouldering, there are some great gyms you can go to. And I, I kind of think of this as something that also helps you, you know, when you're wanting to eventually climb outside, or this is just a great intro to that. So Portland Rock Gym is a great one. I really like Circuit Bouldering Gym. I love our our local indoor rock climbing gyms because they not only offer rock climbing, but they often will have yoga classes or strength training, um, and usually that's all included in one membership. Vicki, I've been like indoor rock climbing curious for years now. And I just have never sort of taken the plunge into checking it out. How hard is it to get into that for someone who doesn't have any experience uh, doing that sort of thing? That is a great question because I had a really hard time accessing indoor rock climbing when I first started back when I was living in Maryland and California, all the gyms were like not beginner friendly. So it's helpful if you know someone who is an active indoor climber and can give you a little bit of info about the gym you're trying to go to. Because some gyms, I would say like circuit bouldering gym, um, it's really accessible. Uh, They also have like a ton of kids that go there. Um, So sometimes it feels like you're just climbing up a ladder And that's a great confidence booster, let me tell you, (laughs) because there's no like, oh my gosh, I'm halfway up this huge wall and like, I feel like I'm just going to fall to my death, you know? This is one where like, there are super, super beginner friendly routes um, that have that ladder type of work. And then, you know, it's also a great place for people who are super climbers and it'll take you up until like the highest level where (laughs) you're like, how is this person hanging upside down and sticking their foot up (laughs) here? Like, what are they doing? (laughs) (laughs) It sounds insane. Yeah. Uh, But better to do that inside, I suppose, than like, you know, on an actual cliff. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Unless you have the experience to do it. But uh, wow. Uh, Very cool. That's I I might have to check that out. It's something I've I've always been, yeah, really interested in. I I did see it. I've been curious about this too. I think I went to Portland Rock Gym Mm -hmm. 
some number of years ago for an assignment um, where I was taking pictures of an indoor ice climbing competition. Do you know anything about this? No, I know that there are definitely like, you know, places where you can learn to ice climb, but I've actually never seen it or done it before. They had like special um, uh, holds in the wall that you hit with like an ice axe. Whoa. And they were like speed climbing up with with that. And it was it was crazy to me. But I was like, wow, yeah, this is this is way like if you want to get into, you know, ice climbing, but you don't want to start with climbing actual ice. What a cool way to 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 check it out um, and get figure out sort of what that motion is like. So I don't know. I don't know if anyone if, if Rock Jim's doing that or if anyone else is doing that. But if that's uh up your alley. I'm sure there's, there's a way to find that. Yeah, for sure. I don't think I have the confidence to uh, even like dip my toes <laughs> into that yet, but yeah. Um, okay. So what else are you liking to do indoors? We've got our yoga, indoor climbing, soaking pools. What else? Yeah. We're going to keep going kind of back and forth on like active chill. <laughs> um, so something that I, I really like to do uh, is meditate. It's a thing that I, you know, it's a practice that I have. And I love to meditate with um, plant medicine made out of Pacific Northwest plants. So this is like tinctures that, you know, you can make out of Western red cedar or, you know, yarrow or devil's club, any, any number of plants. And it's a great way to continue to connect with nature, even if you're not actively in nature. So, I mean, this is kind of a subtle practice of like sitting quietly and sort of attuning yourself to what happens in your body and mind and experience as, you know, you sort of are with this plant tincture. Um, but it, it, you know, if you practice it, it's something you can really sort of gain a different feel for like, oh, you know, Western red cedar is a tree that feels a certain way in your body. And when you go back out to visit that tree, if you see one on the trail, it's a, a for me, it's a whole, a broader experience um, to sort of, you know, uh, deepen your relationship with the various plants that you're encountering when you're going out on a hike or doing whatever you do in nature. So what is this tincture that you're talking about? What does that actually look like? I mean, it's so if you if you imagine, so for example, with 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 red cedar, um, in the winter time, you can find fallen uh, branches, mm. and you can take those branches and you can sort of you know um, uh, process them and put them into a jar um, with some sort of very high grade organic alcohol usually, um, and if you sort of let that sit for a while, um, that will. The, the alcohol will draw out a lot of the properties of the cedar branch and it'll turn sort of a darker color. You can see mm -hmm. and each plant is sort of different on what color and how long and all that stuff. Um, but then you can sort of strain that out and you have this little tincture bottle of basically this, the medicine, medicinal properties of this Western red cedar. This is what you would do for, you know, um, physical medicine. So if you go to like a naturopath who uses these types of things, this is the process they'll go through. Um, but if you use a very small amount, you know, five or six drops of that, it's just sort of this homeopathic dose that, um, is a, you know, we don't have to worry about it affecting your body too strongly, but it's something that you can still gain sort of an understanding and have a, a different feeling of what that plant is like inside your body. You, so you have the tincture, are you ingesting it or how is this working? Yeah. Yeah. It's something that you can just, you know, drop it. There's a little dropper bottle and you can drop it straight into your mouth. Um, or you can drop it into a glass of water. If you don't like the taste, a lot of plants can be sort of bitter or astringent. So, um, you know, for some people prefer to do it in water, um, or in other things. Um, but you can find, you know, a lot of this plant medicine everywhere. I like, um, uh, the shop wildish in Portland. Um, they do their own tinctures. Um, there's also a company called Cascadia Folk Medicine um, that is in Oregon, and they are, you know, they do very, very good stuff. And they're sort of dedicated to um, making the medicine in a way that is, um, like, you know, sustainable and also like respectful of the plants and of the land and all of that stuff. So, um, you know, there's there's any number of people, and a lot of I have a lot of friends who just make make this stuff on their own. Um, you know, you get into the circle enough and you've got your friends who are, you know, oh, I made this lilac glycerite or like, you know, oh, I've got this, you know, <laughs> this, uh, lungwort tincture I made out of, you know, 
lichens that fell from the Salmon River Trail. I mean, people are doing all kinds of stuff out there. And once you sort of gain a confidence, um, you can really find this whole world opening up of connecting to plants in a different way. Um, and people talk about tree hugging and just sort of sitting underneath a tree or just standing in the forest. And that's a great way to connect with plants. And you can go a step further by sort of learning about each individual plant. Um, and what I like about sitting with these plants in this way is that it then leads me to sort of reading about them um, and reading about how they work in the forest, um, what the plants are like. Um, there's, it, it's really a, a great educational opportunity um, as well as like a, you know, spiritual and physical opportunity as well. Yes. Is, and this is something where you can take courses on to learn, um, is my understanding, Jamie. And I feel like Oregon is like the perfect place to do that too. Oh yeah. I mean, we're in like a rainforest yeah. here and there's a ton of plants. Uh, you know, I know people who will, you know, look to the Amazon for, to, for plants and to do these things or like, you know, uh, Asia and, you know, all the, all over the world, but we have like this, <laughs> this great, great resource of, of the forest all around us and the desert. And there's so much here mm -hmm. that it seems silly to look for plants elsewhere at this point. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Going back to one of my crazy, uh, active <laughs> indoor activities. Um, I love, I love this. I love this back and forth. There's a great balance. <laughs> um, so, you know, we talked about bouldering gyms, but obviously there are great, uh, just like strength gyms in general in and around Portland. And this is for a big one for me is like, I'm not by any means an Olympic weightlifter or anything like that, but I do look to strength training <laughs> as like injury prevention through throughout the whole year, but like more so, you know, during this season and really building that strength for my outdoor activities later on in the year or in the new year. And so, you know, whether that's lifting different types of weights or just using um, your body weight for different activities, that's what I like to do in some of these strength gyms. Something that I kind of have as a pipe dream for next year is dipping my toes into the world of triathlons. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and not to open up a whole yeah. can of worms here, but strength training is something that you kind of have to do in order to get better at a lot of things, but especially with like running, biking, swimming. <laughs> so, um, as I've been getting into like the base training to begin the actual training, um, this is something that I've been focusing on. So when you talk about going to one of these strength gyms, like, are we talking about just what you'd think when you say like i'm going to the gym like they've got all the weight machines they've got all the the rowers and the treadmills and stuff like that or is it something different than that so i go to a place called fulcrum fitness and they alternate each day of the week with a different activity um so it's either strength focused where you're you know mostly doing heavier weights or it's high intensity interval training, getting your heart rate up, getting a little bit of cardio in there, as well as using weights, um, or a conditioning class, um, which is kind of a little bit of both. They don't have a ton of machinery. A lot, at my gym at least, is using dumbbells, barbells, um, kettlebells uh, as your main weightlifting. So it's sort of like the free weights combined with some exercises to sort of just to keep the body strong and keep it, you know, um, I don't know, uh, uh, what, what are, what are the words? What do you, what are you trying to keep your body? <laughs> through this experience? Yeah. Just keeping building that muscle. So, mm -hmm. um, for example, like building muscle, especially, um, in the legs and getting your like hips stronger, your hip flexors. Oh my gosh. I could go on and on about your <laughs> hip flexors and the importance of that and, um, all of your outdoor activities, especially like hiking and running and stuff. Um, so building strength through those, through the like lower body for that is something that's great. And also like any core activity is going to help so much with injury prevention because your core is stabilizing everything else in your body. <laughs> that, that makes sense. The hips, I feel, I feel you in the hips. I feel like every time I get a massage after hiking season, my massage therapist is just like digging into my hips and it is <laughs> great, but also like horrible. Yeah. Yeah. 
We hold a lot right in there in the hips. <laughs> oh well, Vicky, let's let's uh, pull it back in the other direction once again. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that I love to do this time of year is um, research and and think about what I'm doing when the weather gets nice again. <laughs> Yeah, daydream. <laughs> daydream. You know, we, you know, longtime listeners will know I'm not the biggest snow sport guy on the planet. So I'm not like looking to go to ski season uh, or anything like that. Um, so I'm thinking about spring already. Um, I think even it was like a couple months ago, I was like, what do I, what do I, what do I want to go for 2024? And we'll have a whole conversation about that later. But this is a good time of year, I think, to start scheming, dreaming. Um, even if you have some great ideas, some booking, uh, people are, aren't really going to start booking summer stuff, uh, unless it's really, really popular until the beginning of, you know, at least the beginning of spring next year. So if you can get stuff now, if you can have your plans set and your ducks in a row, go ahead and book those, um, because you're going to want to go ahead and make sure you've got your hotel room, your campsite, your hiking permit, um, whatever you can get now. Um, go ahead and do it. Those who plan ahead will be rewarded. But, you know, even this time of year, Vicky, I like to just dream, you know, yeah. <laughs> what is it, what is it that I'm feeling? What is it that I'm into? Where haven't I been that I really want to go? Where have I been before that I want to go again? Um, you know, what am I curious about in terms of various places in this area? And it's a really fun practice to just like, you know, make a list or, you know, um, I like to make a, a, a custom Google map with just like little pins all over it um, and just sort of see like, you know, am I getting around the state and all the places I want to go? Um, and, you know, whatever you do, I think it, it's just a really great exercise at this time of year. I love that. And it's just this practice of like thinking and speaking it into existence, mm-hmm. which is something that I feel like I've done on the podcast a lot. I'm like, <laughs> oh, Jamie, that's on my list. And yeah. then like, you know, a few months later, I'm like, I finally did it. I checked it off my list. I went there. But yeah, I'm totally in the same boat. I'm like dreaming up what I can do, you know, when the weather's a little bit nicer. Kind of same boat for me. I'm not a skier or snowboarder. I'm like a snowshoer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I think in like the immediate near future, I'm thinking about booking cabins and, you know, enjoying the snow in that way. And then in the long term future, thinking about some of those summer adventures. Um, I think my goal for 2024 is to have a little bit more foresight into uh-huh. actually booking things because I, I I know that I should be booking things, <laughs> but then I never actually do it. I'm like, oh, there'll be time. Like, I'll get to it. And then I never do. And then summer comes around and I'm, you know, scrambling for last minute openings in some of these places. I've been doing this professionally for like eight years now. And I just like last year or the year before finally got good about this. If something, I don't know if if, if this is for me, maybe a lot of people like this, it's hard for me to pull the trigger on something. Um, You know, it's, I can, I can have an, uh, have the idea on a list somewhere, but the idea of like, you know, making the reservation, making it official, um, it, it, that that's, there's a block there for me that makes it hard to do it sometimes. I know. Maybe we both have a fear of commitment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. I, I find like I just last year, you know, not this time, but a little bit later, I just ended up, I took a day and just booked like everything in like one day. Um, and it felt so good to do that just to get it all out of the way. Um, and then I had, you know, campgrounds and hotels and stuff booked for like, you know, March through July and it felt incredible. So 10 out of 10 would recommend booking ahead, thinking ahead. <laughs> well, I'm excited for a future episode where we talk about what we are scheming up for 2024. Insert evil laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so last few here, some other indoor, very active things that I personally really enjoy here in Portland. Well, I'm trying to enjoy this one. Indoor swimming. Like I said, I'm trying to get into triathlon training, and um, I don't think I ever fully learned how to properly, like, freestyle swim in my life, and, like, me attempting to swim laps now is quite comical (laughs) because... 
I clearly don't know how to do it. <laughs> but um, in my search for indoor lap pools um, have just come up, like, I don't think I've really delved into these great community centers that Portland has all around the city. Mm -hmm. Um, You basically just look up one that's close to you. And, um, you know, for a drop-in fee of like 10 bucks, you can access some of these great community centers that not only have indoor swimming pools, but um, like indoor tracks, different gyms, um, a lot of great kid activities as well that they'll host. And um, knowing that that is a resource here in the city is really awesome. Yeah. If you start going enough, getting a membership to those places, I used to have a membership to a spot in Southwest Portland. That was great. And some nights I would go to go to the gym and some nights I would just go to play basketball. Um, (laughs) You know, but the, the, it's a, it's like a resource. I feel like I, I utilized as a kid or something, but like I Uh haven't thought about as an adult a lot, but yeah, these are, incredible, incredible resources. Um, and just a great way to sort of be in community as well. Like I know there's a lot of swimming clubs, um, and, you know, people who help people do swimming better, or at least there's all kinds of, of, of resources. If you just, I think, look for them and, um, accept that, accept them into your life. Exactly. Exactly. Going off of that, if anyone knows a swim coach out there, please uh, (laughs) send any recommendations my way. I think the last thing I want to just add is that there are great indoor sports leagues as well throughout Mm -hmm. Portland, and that's a great way to keep in shape, but also make friends. And that's one of the first things I did upon moving to Portland is I joined an indoor soccer league and I do it year round, but it is so, so great to be able to have that when it's raining out. Yeah. So many good opportunities. I I love that. You know, this is a place in in Western Oregon, at least where we get so much rain in this time of year. Um, and it's really heartening to see so many people coming together to do so many things, uh, in various places and different, different types of activities. Um, I love that there's just, we have this huge list of ways to stay active, uh, in, in the, 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 uh, dark times. Uh, I'm going to give a quick shout out though, to, um, sleep, to rest in general. (laughs) Um, Oh yeah. You know, I, I do feel like, uh, something that I think about a lot for myself, it's not for everybody, but like coming to these darker, rainier times of the year, I, I like to give myself permission to not be as active as I am in the spring and summer. Um, and so I, I really do a lot more like sleeping and resting than I normally would. Um, because and part of that is it's so hard to wake up early when it's so dark and it's so hard because like, you know, you, I want to go out hiking, but it's like, I gotta be done by like, three or four o'clock, um, that there's just like, you, there, the window is so small. Um, and I, I love, love to give myself permission to just chill out, sleep in, um, take a nap, um, you know, catch up on whatever TV show I'm watching at the moment. Um, you know, it, obviously different strokes for different folks, but like, you know, um, please, if you're into like keeping yourself active, do it and enjoy that. There's so many good opportunities. And if you're not, don't feel any pressure to do that. Um, just hang out, uh, and, uh, and, and relax, um, make some community in other ways as well there. I think this is a great time of year to sort of come together and to reassess, um, what it is that feeds you, what it is that you need in your life to be happy and fulfilled. So whatever that is, go after it, get it. Um, and enjoy doing it. Exactly. Well, folks, I think that will do it for today. Until next time, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as HereIsOregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you'd like to support this podcast, as well as our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and you're interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at Oregonian.com. This episode of the show was produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen.